Hello and welcome to the Freehold Regional High School District Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You do not need to wait until the institution you have a question for is presenting. Go ahead and use that Q&A function throughout the entire event, submitting questions for any and all of our presenters today. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is one of many different sessions happening. We've got two more after this, so make sure you sign up for those others. And then of course, this presentation, along with all of the others are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash FRHSD. I'll put that link in the chat as well. But now for our main event, the reason you're all here, we're gonna turn it over to our institutions. Today, we're going to start off with the University of Rhode Island whenever you are ready. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Brad Cocking. I'm the regional admission advisor for the Mid-Atlantic area. I'm based in New Jersey, so I am your admission counselor. If you ever have any questions after tonight, feel free to contact me. I'll post my email in the chat when I'm done. Uh, so if you haven't been to campus, this is a picture of our quad area right in the middle of campus. We are located in Southern Rhode Island. Uh, we're about 35 minutes south of Providence. It has the closest big city, about 20 minutes from Newport, hour and a half from Boston, two and a half from New York City. We are a medium-sized university with just under 15,000 undergrad. So campus itself is all walking distance. You're not taking shuttles, the classes or anything like that. We're also a diverse campus. About 48% of our students are from out of state and international. The entire student body is represented by 48 states, 68 nations. And we also have an excellent faculty on campus, student to faculty ratio, 16 to one, and 86% have doctoral or terminal degrees. We also like to keep your class sizes smaller. So about 76% have less than 30 students. You will have some bigger lecture halls your first year or two. That's mostly in your general education classes. Once you get into your major courses, they're typically small. As far as housing, you're not required to live on campus, but 94% of our freshmen live on campus in one of our 24 residence halls. Most freshmen will live in one of our living and learning communities where you can choose to live with other students within your major, within your academic college. For example, the College of Engineering has one where all the freshman engineering students are in one area. So they have similar classes together, they have study groups. It's very helpful freshman year. And then after your first year, you have different on-campus options. You see at the bottom there, we have full suites, semi-suites, and a few different apartment complexes on campus as well. So I don't have time to tell you about any specific majors, but you can choose from over 90 majors, 80 plus minors across our eight degree granting colleges here. You can apply as undeclared. You really have two years to declare a major with the exception of nursing, engineering, and our six year doctor of pharmacy program. Those are our most competitive majors. They have different requirements than the other programs. So you wanna apply right away into those majors as a freshman. Besides the majors, URI has lots of opportunities outside of the classroom. We have plenty of internship programs all over the country, all over the world. Uh, study abroad is very popular. We have over 700 programs in more than 75 countries. Every major, every student can study abroad if you want to. We have full year programs, full semester, and even shorter programs in our winter term. Uh, also, we're very much a research institution. Uh, you have plenty of research opportunities on and off campus. You can work side by side with faculty mentors in the field. We do have an honors program. So the minimum criteria to be eligible for the honors program is at least a 3.8 GPA. If you send your test scores in, it's a 3.6 GPA with a 1300 SAT or 27 ACT. Uh, we offer over 150 honors courses. The courses are smaller, more interactive with the professors, not necessarily more work, but more challenging hands-on type work. You get priority registration for classes and there is honors housing after freshman year. And then the stat at the bottom, 90% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in grad school within six months of graduation. So of course that's important. We're proud of that stat. If you wanna see any specific stats for your major, they may have them on their website or they'll have contact info if you wanna reach out to them directly. There's always a lot of events happening on campus. We have 18 division one sports teams. Basketball is our most popular sport. Um, this picture here is the Ryan Center where the team plays. So you can see it's a great atmosphere for home games. And there are also a lot of big events here at the Ryan Center, huge concerts, big comedians come up, um, and then other events on campus like Alumni and Family Weekend. And you can view other events on our website. Besides the events, we have over 300 student clubs and organizations. 
Um, so we have something for everybody. Most of our students are involved in at least one club or organization, whether that's athletics, Greek life, academic clubs, fun outdoor clubs, one of our centers and programs there at the bottom. So like I said, many of our students like to get involved in the community in some capacity. This is our application process. So we are on the Common App. It's a $65 app fee. The essay is on the Common App. So you wanna submit your application first. That opens up in August. Then we'll need your official high school transcript. Your counselor will send that, at least one letter of recommendation. Most students send between one and three to us, and that's fine. Definitely send a counselor letter, maybe a counselor and a teacher, a counselor and a coach. It's really up to you. The big difference this year and next year is we are test optional for all majors. So it's totally up to you if you want to send your SAT or ACT scores. We do super score both. Uh, so if you choose to take one or both tests, I recommend taking it multiple times to get your highest score. Uh, the bottom there, you see our middle 50% profile. So this is half of our admitted students are in those GPA and test score ranges. That's the average ACT. That's for every major except nursing, engineering, and the six-year doctor of pharmacy program. And then deadlines on the right. Early action for us is December 1st, which is later than most colleges. I always recommend everybody apply early action, especially those competitive majors. There's no negative to applying early. You'll get a decision sooner. You also get priority consideration for scholarships applying early action. And then our regular deadline is February 1st. Once you complete your application, you're automatically considered for merit scholarships. Uh, we do have a wide range all the way up to full ride. Your eligibility is based on academic performance. Of course, we'll look at your GPA and your transcript closely. We like to see a challenging course selection. Um, also letters of recommendation, any activities, involvement, leadership in your school and community. That's all considered in the review process. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend taking advantage of our virtual options for now. That website at the bottom that has all of our virtual events and I'll post this in the chat afterwards. Um, we have virtual tours, one-on-one -on -one counselor meetings. We can connect you with current students within your major. There's also a recorded info session on there, just like you would get in an in-person tour. And academic webinars are very helpful. All of our academic colleges have them and some specific majors, as well as other offices around campus, like housing, financial aid, campus life. So definitely go on that website and participate. There's more events than we're still adding as we go. So that's it, thank you. And please message me if you have any questions. Fantastic. What a great way to get us kicked off today with this event. We are going to hear now from Salve Regina University whenever you are ready. Thank you so much. Um, I'm actually going to take you right over the Newport Bridge from the University of Rhode Island to Aquidneck Island, which is um, home of Salve Regina University. Uh, we're located in Newport, Rhode Island. My name is Stephanie Dupuis, and I'm one of the associate deans of undergraduate admission at Salve Regina University. I'm also a graduate of Salve Regina's class of 2004. Um, I was fortunate as um, I was a student um, to have many leadership roles, and one was offering tours in the admissions office. In addition to working in admissions, I also teach in our first year transitions program, which is a one credit advisory um, for all of our first year students to get them acclimated to campus life. We always start our conversation um, about Salve with our heritage and our history. Um, Salve was founded 75 years ago by the Sisters of Mercy. A little um, kind of information about the Sisters of Mercy. They were, uh, they originated in Dublin, Ireland. And in Dublin, they were known as the Dublin walking nuns. Um, the Sisters of Mercy did not live in a convent. They did not live cloistered, but they lived amongst the people in Dublin who needed the most help. They were social workers. They worked in healthcare and education. And and when they founded Salve Regina University, the initial intent was to educate young women to go into helping professions of education, nursing, and social work. Um, we've obviously grown and changed over time. We now are co-ed and have many different majors um, and are founded in the liberal arts. Um, but what does still remain is a focus on the community community service, social justice, and you'll notice these five critical concerns of mercy, which are topics that are integrated into both the academic and extracurricular um, curriculum. This is a picture of our campus on the bottom right. Um, we are located right on the water, um, right on the Atlantic Ocean, um, and our, our campus is a really unique historic um, uh, 
location and setup. Um, our buildings are uh, actually on what was seven Gilded Age historic estate, estates built in the late 1800s. And those mansions and stables and carriage houses and gate houses have been converted into residences, classrooms, um, and other university buildings. I mentioned we started small with 50 students, but we have grown for sure, although we're still considered a small university. We have 2,100 undergraduates, as well as graduate and PhD students as well. Um, our freshman class each year is about 600 entering students. And one of the things I liked best about my time at Salve was the small class sizes. On average, class sizes are 18, and we have a 13 to 1 student to teacher ratio. It is also important to note that 15% of our students are from the state of Rhode Island, which makes 85% of our students from out of state. Um, we are a residential campus, and our freshmen, sophomore, and junior students are guaranteed housing and required to live on campus, making it a nice residential um, campus community. There is housing for seniors if they'd like to stay on campus, but also lots of options to live downtown Newport as well. Our student population is representative of 41 states and 21 nations. Here's a list of our undergraduate programs. There's about 50 different majors or combinations of majors. Some of the most popular programs are in business, psychology, biology and the biomedical sciences, nursing, education, and administration of justice, which is our criminal justice program. I do find a lot of our students double major and pick up minors because they have great access to advising. Um, I ended up double majoring in an area in the arts, and uh, we do find that a lot of our students are really interested in, in combining um, like majors and sometimes majors that are totally different. Here's some additional minors and pre-professional programs. We also offer a wide variety of five-year accelerated master's degree programs like our MBA. The building that you see here is Ogre Court. This is our main administrative building. And it's also if, where, if you've came to visit campus, um, where our admissions office is. Here are some photos of some classroom environments. Um, with small class sizes, um, our classrooms are experiential and hands-on. Whether you're in the labs, you're on the stage, or like the students in our cultural and historic preservation program, you're out doing archaeological digs in the community. Um, there's many ways to get your hands dirty and really put to use what you're learning in the classroom in real world situations. Slave has over 80 clubs and organizations. We have 20 varsity athletics teams that are NCAA Division III, as well as club sports and intramurals. Um, and if you do have the time to visit campus, I would definitely plan to spend longer than just your campus tour time, as there is so much to do, so much to see. You're going to want to walk on the cliff walk. You're going to want to have a cup of chowder downtown um, and take a walk down on the beach as well. Some additional photos of student life and activities, community service organizations, multicultural club um, activities, as well as guest speakers who've been on our campus. We're going to switch quickly to the application requirements. Salve is a common app school. We are test optional and have been test optional for a very long time. Um, for those of you who are unable to take the SAT or ACT or choose not to submit those scores, you will be eligible for, for all financial aid and merit-based scholarships that we offer. The most important part of your application is your transcript. And we do look at your GPA, um, your weighted GPA. Um, and in addition to that, we are looking to see the classes you've elected to take and how you have done in them and how you've grown over the years. The only program students who have to apply directly into is our direct entry nursing program. Um, and all other programs um, uh, really can be you can move around. Um, you do not have to uh, declare your major till the end of sophomore year. And we recommend that students really um, take advantage of exploring the liberal arts core. There's a couple uh, dates here. November 1 is early action and early decision required of all of our nursing applica uh, applicants, that November 1 deadline. We have an early action 2 deadline of January 5th and regular decisions February 1st. Students should um, utilize the FAFSA to apply for financial aid, and we automatically review and award merit scholarship money, which ranges from ten dollars to $25,000 a year. I'm going to drop the um, upcoming visit link to uh, in the chat with my information, but we have been hosting in-person campus tours since last June, and we expect to continue to do so. We're doing a wide variety of virtual programming, and um, the one that's coming up soonest is this Sunday is our virtual spring open house. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our presentations this evening, and I hope you do uh, spend some time in Rhode Island soon checking out some great colleges. Have a wonderful night.
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Salve Regina University. That was wonderful. I want to remind everyone that the chat is open. I'm going to, or excuse me, the Q&A is open. I'm going to turn it over now to Goldie Becom College, who looks like they're already ready. Thank you. All right, so my name is Valerie. Um, I represent a school in Wilmington, Delaware. It's called Goldie Beacom. So you can see we're kind of located in the middle of everywhere, as I always like to, always like to say. Um, so Baltimore and Philadelphia are about an hour away. Um, Washington, D.C., as well as New York City are about two and a half hours. And then you can see Atlantic City um, a little under two hours as well. So we have a very diverse campus. Um, you can see we have students enrolled from over 22 different states and over 60 nations. Um, this slide just has a bunch of fun facts about the school. So we do have a 20 to one student faculty ratio. Just like the other colleges, we do have smaller class sizes, which is a great opportunity to meet professors. They actually care. You're not in just this huge lecture hall. We do have 25 different degree options for undergrad and 41, including our masters. 54% um, of freshmen do live on campus. And with that being said, you are allowed to have a car on campus for free. There's no additional charge for that. Um, one of my favorite things uh, when I was a student here is we do have a three day weekend every single weekend. So we don't actually have classes on Fridays ever. Um, so this is a great opportunity to go out and explore. Uh, we also do have 13 different NCAA double or NCAA Division II sports teams on campus as well. This has a list of all of our majors. So our most popular majors are in business. Um, all of the ones that you see in white are our concentration. Um, we also are pretty popular in psychology and criminal justice as well. So this has a list of all of our sports on it. So we do have men's and women's basketball, cross country, soccer and track and field. Um, we also offer men's baseball and golf, and then we have women's softball, tennis, and volleyball. Um, as far as our application, we do have a free application. It's right on our website. Um, so you would just go right onto gbc.edu to apply. We do request for your high school transcript as well as your SAT or ACT scores. Currently at the moment, um, you can still be accepted without those scores. Um, and then we do have rolling admissions, so you can apply all the way up through, you know, before school starts in August. Um, and then we do recommend that you fill out your FAFSA as well. So this is brand new for the fall of 2021. We have actually cut our tuition in half. So for 30 credit hours, it would be 12,750. So that's five um, classes. And then with that being said, this is our cost card. So we do have the same cost for out of state, domestic or international students. Um, as you can see on the left, you see the commuter price and the campus resident price. And then this cool looking scholarship grid. This is just the amount that you would be awarded in scholarship based off of your GPA and either your ACT or SAT score. Um, like I said, we still will accept without those. This is just kind of an overview of our campus. So you can see we do have four different residence halls on campus. The Fulmer Center, which is kind of smack dead in the middle. This one has, um, this is where all your classes would be. And then over in the Jones Center, this is where our fitness center is, the cafeteria, um, the weight room, the store. Um, this is our dining hall. So we do have all you care to eat um, meal plans. We have made um, brick oven pizza. We have Starbucks and grab and go options. Um, so this was actually brand new and opened up uh, in January. As far as freshmen, we do give them two options as far as living on campus. So first is our leech hall. Um, this will be an apartment style. It's two bedrooms, two bathroom, a kitchen and a living room area. Um, so each bedroom has two people. So the whole apartment would be four people all together. Our second option is front to hall. So this is actually brand new. This just opened up in January as well. Um, so there are single and double options. There's single use restrooms on all the floors. There's study uh, areas on each floor and a hangout space as well. This is our student affairs. So this is also located in our Jones Center, kind of our student center. 
Um, so these are, you know, the guys that work with all the clubs and organizations. Uh, with us being a smaller campus, you, if there's something that you don't see on this list that you really want to start, that is always an option. Um, and then kind of in these glass windows through here, this is where our cafeteria is. Uh, we do have a career service on campus that works with all students as early as your freshman year. Um, they help you with career fairs, mock interviews, they help you with your resume um, and so forth. Um, what you're seeing in this picture looks like a college fair, but it's actually a career fair. Um, we hold two of these a year. So this is a great opportunity to you know, put your foot in the door somewhere with a business in Delaware. Um, we are holding information sessions on campus. So we do hold them on one Saturday um, every month. So if you are interested in this, you can definitely um, sign up right on our website and then you would meet with somebody in admissions, come take a tour, um, and then you would uh, be able to talk the admissions process as well. And then lastly, this is just kind of like an overview of our campus as well. And then this cool little QR code that will actually take you right to our application. So I will put my email in the chat as well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, I am the admissions rep for New Jersey. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Wonderful, thank you so much, Goldie Become College. We are going to hear now from the University of Delaware. Take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Hermanow and I am the admissions counselor from the University of Delaware. So within our Office of Undergraduate Admissions, I'm actually the assistant director of our visit experience and I'm also a UD alum. I graduated four years ago now with my degree in psychology and a minor in biology and I'm also a Delaware resident. But as far as being an admissions counselor goes, I'm the rep for Central Jersey. So I um, am sort of your liaison and your touch point with the University of Delaware since you're all located in Monmouth County. Now, some context for you all who may not be familiar with the University of Delaware. We are a four-year public institution, and we are the state flagship for the state of Delaware. Now, we do look considerably different than our other four-year public peers. So if you're familiar with schools like Rutgers or Penn State or even the Maryland schools, those schools and those campuses are fairly large. The University of Delaware serving the state of Delaware and Delaware being the second smallest state in the country is a lot smaller. We only have about 18,000 undergraduate students on our campus. So even though we're a four year public school, we're actually only considered a mid sized university. When we're talking about the University of Delaware, it's also important to highlight just why the University of Delaware is in such a um, beneficial place for you all on the East Coast. We're really smack dab in the middle of the Mid-Atlantic region. We're only about two, two and a half hours from where you all in Monmouth County. So it's really easy for students to get to and from their campus for various holidays and things that you might wanna be able to go home for on the weekends. But when we're talking about the campus itself, it is also important to keep in mind that we're a residential campus. So even though we're really close to you all in New Jersey, when students move on to our campus for the start of the semester, they're there for that entire 14 week long period. And when students move on to campus. They're moving on to the University of Delaware and all of our on-campus residence halls, but our campus really is centered around the town of Newark, Delaware. The University of Delaware and the town of Newark are really old. Um, we predate the Revolutionary War. The town of Newark was founded in the 1600s. The University of Delaware goes all the way back to 1743. So when you're walking around our campus, we have an abundance of old historic buildings that look like this aerial shot here. So if you're looking for a classic East Coast college feel in that brick and ivy style campus, we're that school for you. You could see in this overhead shot that all of these buildings are our University of Delaware buildings. And as I was stressing a few slides ago about how our campus is a lot smaller than most other schools. Our campus is also a lot more compact than most other schools. So this aerial screenshot right now, if you were to start at one side of my screen, walk all the way to the other, you'd only be walking for about a half hour and you'd be walking across the entirety of our campus. When students are waking up in the morning, going to class, grabbing a bite to eat on Main Street in our downtown area, they're able to basically go wherever they want just by walking around on foot. 
We're a really accessible campus for students to get around in. Um, most students choose to walk, ride their bike, ride their skateboard. But of course, we do have a shuttle bus system if it's rainy or if it's snowing or if students wanted to go to um, the game day bus to go see one of our Division One sports on our football stadium and our other sports resources. But this shot of our green, which is the green, is the center of our campus. So when you're walking around, you'll be surrounded by peers. You'll be um, walking past all of our historic buildings. You'll be walking through all of these shade trees. And since the University of Delaware is so deeply connected to the community that we're a part of, it's also important to keep in mind that there are an abundance of off-campus resources that are just within walking distance of the campus. So if you love trees, if you love nature, if you're an active person, we have a state park system that actually butts right up to the edge of our campus. So you can go for um, hikes, trail runs, you could ride your there through largest state park systems that connects Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. And then just to back up a few slides, Main Street, which is the downtown shopping area for the town of Newark that we're located in, runs right through the center of our campus. There are a whole bunch of shops, restaurants, coffee shops, places to study, and small little stores for students to get like the little basic necessities that they need over the course of the semester. Now, pivoting to academics, I did mention before that we are a four-year public institution. We are a land, sea, and space grant school. So as a public institution, we have a bunch of funding for students to study really whatever major you want. We have over 150 different majors and over 100 different minors, uh, and all these programs are direct admission. So when students apply to the University of Delaware, they choose the major they most want to study, they apply to it, we review you for that major, and then we admit you to that program. You'll actually start taking courses relevant to your degree from day one. And it's extremely popular for students to actually graduate with more than one degree from the University of Delaware. The average student has three different academic programs under their belt. So you could do a double major or a dual major across multiple disciplines and have multiple different minors before you leave UD. And it's also important to keep in mind that since we have all this funding available for all of these major programs, we also have an abundance of undergraduate research experiences that are available for you. So if you've ever thought about doing uh, undergraduate research, it's available for you at the University of Delaware. 84% of our research spaces are filled by undergraduate students. And as a high school student, you may be thinking research is for science majors. And of course, there are plenty of STEM fields on our campus that have some form of undergraduate research, but every single major on our campus has research, including the business and the humanities fields, um, our social sciences as well. If you are majoring in a major at Delaware, you're going to be able to get research under your belt before you graduate. Now, in addition to all the different majors that we have on campus, we also have an honors college. The honors college is available for all of our students. It doesn't um, matter what you're studying. All you have to do is submit an additional honors college application at the time that you apply. Now, with that, I'm going to post my contact information in the chat box since I'm your rep. If you have any other questions, feel free to send me an email. And you may have noticed there are links on all of these slides, I'll make sure I grab those links for you all and put them in the chat box too, so you can tool around our website and get more of your questions answered. But with that, thank you, everyone. Awesome. Well, thank you. We are so grateful to have all of these experts in one place to help us learn about their campuses and their programs. And so we're going to go ahead and take advantage of having these experts here with us today and move into a brief Q&A session. So if all of our attendees want to join me on video here, I will share my screen very quickly. And our first question for the Q&A is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go in the same order. So I'll ask this question first to the University of Rhode Island. Yeah, so my advice will be to visit every campus that you're interested in, specifically when students are around. I tell people all the time, that's when you really figure out if that college is a good fit for you. If you can see yourself there in the next four plus years of your life. Perfect, Salve Regina University. You stole my answer, Brad. <laughs> Visiting campus is so important. So I'm actually going to expound upon that a little bit more. Um, in addition to the campus that you're going to choose to live on for the next four years, the surrounding community is also your home away from home. So I do encourage students that when they when they visit, 
um, take advantage of spending some extra time in the local community, go have lunch, take a walk, um, really get a sense of what your life would be like. You're going to be doing internships. You're going to be doing service. You're going to be doing all types of things in the community surrounding the campus that you live on. Um, so getting to know um, the area is super important. Fantastic, thank you. Goldie Beacom College, what is your advice? All right, so both of that, <laughs> um, but also don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I know sometimes students seem a little bit shy, but that's kind of what we're here for. So if you have any questions, you're not familiar with the process or your parents not familiar with the process, please ask questions because that's what we're here for. Wonderful, thank you. And then we'll have University of Delaware close this question for us. Hey everyone. I would recommend staying as organized as possible, and that would include actually creating a college search specific email address that you use and that you give out to all the different colleges. Um, speaking as someone who manages some of our our office communications, you'll be receiving a lot of email messages from all the different colleges that you're applying for. And some of these emails are very important because they're asking you to submit more information or complete things related to your account. So if you're using your personal email address, it's easy for those messages to get lost. And it's also important to keep in mind um, that some mass communications from listservs can get accidentally flagged as spam or moved to your promotions folder. So just having your own college specific email address that you're making sure to check frequently and checking the spam folder as well will just make things a whole bunch, a whole lot easier for you all. Fantastic. Great advice from everyone here. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. All right. The next question is actually my favorite question because it helps us a little bit more about each of your campuses. So starting again with the University of Rhode Island, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? My favorite uh, tradition is our oozeball tournament every year. It's a big volleyball tournament, but it's played in about a foot of mud. You know, they're playing music. It's always a good time every year. That sounds like a great time. Thank you. Salve Regina. My favorite tradition actually just happened a couple weeks back. It is our SRU Student Exposition Day. Um, we have a day in which we cancel classes and meetings and we set up the campus in a conference style format and students present their work. Um, and that work can be research from the labs, it can be performances in the performing arts spaces, it can be talks led by students who have studied abroad or done community service projects. Um, and it's just a great way to get a sense of all that our students are doing to celebrate the many wonderful things they're doing in our community and outside our community. Um, and uh, just a great way to see what the students are doing. We actually welcome um, prospective students to come during that day too. It's always a great tour day um, because students can pop around and see what the students um, work is like. It's a great way to see yourself uh, as a member of the campus community, right? Thank you. Um, Goldie Beacom College, what's your favorite event or tradition? Um, so we have a basketball event called Hoop It Up. And so like everyone from the campus comes out and then we have a huge amount of our alumni come out. So it's always like a really good time to see, you know, current students and past students all together. Sounds fantastic. Okay, University of Delaware, what's your favorite event or tradition? Oh gosh, I'm actually gonna say two just because they're both related to each other. But as a land and a sea grant institution, we actually have Ag Day and Coast Day, which are research expositions where all of our students who are conducting research related to agriculture and other all of our students who are conducting research related to marine life and studies open up their research facilities for campus guests and community members in order to educate the public about all the important research that the University of Delaware is doing. And these are open to you all as well, obviously not right now because we're in a pandemic, but if you're interested in marine studies or if you're interested in being a pre-vet major, these are really important events that we'd love to have you come and visit us at one day. I love it. Such a diverse uh, tech list of different events on campus as well. So thanks for sharing those. Okay, we have one more question for our panel here today, and that is give an interesting or fun fact about your campus. Kicking it off again, once again, with University of Rhode Island. Yeah, so a lot of our off-campus housing is in the closest beach town about 10 minutes away. So the people who own the houses there, they actually rent them out to our students when they move off campus. So it's a really good deal for them. Of course, a lot of our juniors and seniors tend to move off campus by then. 
Very good. Thank you so much. Salve Regina University. I was going to mention our housing, but since I talked about it before and you just talked about housing, we're on the same wavelength. Um, I'm going to share that Newport has been um, recently a uh, really popular, a really popular filming location. Um, most recently we filmed a, uh, there's a filming of a movie with Emma Stone and Joaquin Phoenix on campus. And they are currently right now, HBO is there filming a series about the Gilded Age. So if you want to learn more about um, historic Newport and the Gilded Age, there's going to be a, a, a series coming out apparently on HBO. <laughs> a lot of our students also um, end up uh, being extras in a lot of the filming that happens. So it's a really cool opportunity. Yeah, it sounds like it. Thank you. Goldie Vcom College? Um, I guess an interesting fact is our college was named after uh, two smaller colleges. So they were actually rivals in Wilmington. So there was Goldie College and Beacom College. Um, and then they ended up just deciding to merge together. So that's kind of how we got our name. Good to know. Thank you for that history lesson there. And then last but not least, University of Delaware. So my fun fact is that we're actually haunted by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, he got into a bar fight in the 1800s and he sustained uh, an injury on our campus that eventually led to him dying in Baltimore. Um, so that's an interesting fact. And every October around Halloween, our school actually does ghost tours of our campus where they point out a few of the um, more notorious people who have stepped foot on the University of Delaware. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. This was so helpful to get to know a little bit more about how to navigate this important college search time and also to know about each of your fantastic campuses. So I really appreciate you all being here with us. And I also appreciate all of you who joined us for this session, whether you are here live or you are catching the recording at a later date, we're really grateful that you joined us today. Um, there was a question in the Q&A that came in asking about the University of Maine. Unfortunately, they weren't able to be with us here today, but hopefully you'll be able to check out their website and connect with their missions team as well. At this point, I want to remind you all that there are two more sessions happening. This one is wrapping up uh, a little bit early, so you might be able to join in one of the ones going on right now. Otherwise, we'll have two more happening yet this evening. And then this session, along with all of the other sessions from this event, are being recorded and you can catch them in about a week. Um, and once again, I can drop that link in the chat for you all. Uh, but when you close out your session here today, you will have a very quick uh, four question survey, which is going to help us make these events better for you all in the future. So if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes to complete those, I would very much appreciate it. All right, everyone, thank you to our panelists, to our attendees. Have a wonderful rest of your day.